subsonic versus supersonic ammunition. What's the difference? Why would you use one over the other? All of those questions will be answered in this video here today, and we're gonna be doing some range time demonstrations, so stick tuned. But right now we are in the VSO vault, and if you guys missed our video on the vault, then I will have a link in the description box down below where you can find that video if you guys are interested in seeing what went into making this space this space. So this topic was actually derived from the comment section on a different video that I published uh, probably in the springtime or something like that. Uh, silencer versus suppressor, what's the difference? So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it out there and say that there was a lot of wrong thing going on in the comment section of that video over there. You can go visit it yourself, uh, but it's a silly place, just fair warning. The contention is that subsonic ammunition makes guns movie quiet. And while it can reduce the apparent sound signature of a firearm, uh, there are some other things that you need to understand. And to do that, I think we're going to break down and rehash the uh, four sources of sound that firearms make when they are discharged. So if we grab this AK-47 over here, uh, the first one is action noise. And this is a really good example because they have a very distinctive clackety-clack noise that they make. That happens every single time the bolt is worked, whether it's got a cartridge being loaded in, a cartridge being fired, uh, hand cycling, all of that happens every single time, no matter what. Uh, most of the time you just can't hear it because the magnitude of the energy coming out of the end of the barrel is dwarfs that noise. So you just, you have audio occlusion with that. <laughs> Holy. So another good one to talk about while we have the AK out is operational noise. And this is commonly referred to as port pop. And what I mean by that is management of the gases inside the operational components of the gun. And the way that works is any semi-automatic firearm is going to have uh, some proportion of the gas or operational energy of the firearm siphoned off to operate its components. And uh, doesn't matter if it's direct blowback, delayed blowback, direct impingement, gas piston, uh, this is going to occur. And that is subject to adding that extra can on the end of it. If you take a, a can and add it to the front of the gun, you're going to increase the operational pressure of that. And for instance, on an AK, AKs are known for being overgassed already. And that's one of the reasons they function so reliably is they basically take all that extra gas and vent it out the top. So you will hear that uh, when you suppress the gun. Whew. I don't know. I'm gonna say probably not hearing safe, honestly. We'll grab this guy here. An AR experiences its poor pop back here at the breech and in the vent holes in the carrier it makes a loud pop. So if you're using a semi-automatic firearm, you cannot eliminate those two things that I just talked about. One and two cannot be eliminated whatsoever if you are using a semi-automatic firearm and you're allowing it to function. The only way that you can eliminate those two, the first two that I've discussed, is to use a manually cycling action, like for instance, something like this lever gun or a bolt action rifle. Number three, muzzle report. This is the one that is actually attacked by your silencer. This is the one that the can is actually designed to soak up. And what we have here is a bunch of energy coming out of the front of the barrel, lots of expanding gas, fire, all that sort of stuff. This thing is designed to capture that, slow it down, cool it down, and redirect it. Lastly, and the one that we're actually talking about in today's video, is the sound that the bullet makes as it travels down range. So if you fire a supersonic projectile, whether the gun is suppressed or not, just like if you listen to a supersonic jet break the sound barrier, that same phenomenon is occurring when you fire a supersonic projectile just on a smaller scale. And that's going to happen regardless. So a lot of the report that you hear when you fire a suppressed firearm that is shooting supersonic ammunition is that noise, the actual sonic boom of the projectile going down range. It has really nothing to do with the extra gas or anything that's being captured. These things are very efficient and they capture that gas really well. There's nothing really with the blast wave or anything like that going on in there. The can is picking that up and soaking that up. 
What is occurring though, as soon as that bullet leaves the can, it hits ambient air and breaks the sound barrier, compressing those layers of air and making a sonic boom. So what we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna take this 300 Blackout AR here to the range and we'll go get the chronograph, show you guys some numbers and the different effects of different ammunition and what it looks like to be on either side of that sound barrier. So what I got going on here is I have a couple different loads of 300 Blackout and I have a chronograph behind me and it is oriented in such a way that the bullets will go through the chronograph, give us a reading, fly over the hill and have plenty of space to give us that supersonic effect or not uh, before they impact the berm. I'm also going to state that I'm going to miss on purpose so that there's no steel or target effects uh, to the sound that you guys are going to hear. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom it in so you guys can read the readings on the chronograph. Fioki 220s. Two hundred and eight hand load. Two twenty. Hush two twenty. So a real quick breakdown of what you guys just witnessed. We started off with a true subsonic round right around the 950 feet per second range. And as we expected, we cannot detect any supersonic effect. The next up was around about 1050. And that round is right around where we would call the transonic range, which is it's starting to push the limits of the sound barrier, starting to flirt with it a little bit. And we could start to see a little bit of that supersonic effect. And then the third round was definitely over and breaking the sound barrier, giving us quite a bit of supersonic crack. So as you guys saw, there's an appreciable price to be paid for violating that barrier, that physical limit ever so slightly. And what you've actually done, if you select a subsonic loading of ammunition for your for your firearm, you've actually hamstrung your gun. And I'm, so, yes, you do have to have some mass, but the most important component is the velocity of that projectile. And if you've limited it, if you've chopped it off at the speed below the speed of sound, then you have seriously reduced the amount of power that you can produce. Let's talk about ethics for a second. In a vacuum, doesn't matter. All the questions associated with it don't matter. You have identified something that needs to be shot. In doing so, you have escalated that situation to a lethal force encounter. As a human being, you owe it to the rest of humanity to be ethical and efficient in the employment of that lethal force. And to define that mathematically, that is distribution of as much energy into that target as is as necessary to kill it humanely. Whatever it is, again, does not matter. If you are using subsonic ammunition, you are not accomplishing that. It has been well documented that the most important component of a firearm's damage potential is its velocity, giving it the greatest amount of penetration greatest potential for expansion, all of that sort of stuff. What it really comes down to is we need to dump as much energy into that target as possible. To achieve that, we have to have a lot of energy to start with. And subsonic projectiles simply just do not do that. So there's the entry. And I specifically picked a melon that was bisected here so that we could see what was going on on the back side of the thing. And you can see, even though the Fioki is a hollow point, because it doesn't have any velocity to it, it's not really doing any damage. However, if we abolish all the limits and move up to our Stag 10 and 308. All right, so I've gone ahead and picked it up off the ground. And here's the 300 Blackout, here's the 308. Both 30 caliber, but here's an important distinction to start off with right off the bat. Same size entry wound, but right around where the 300 blackout is, this is all solid. If you get into the 308 area, this has been structurally compromised. And that is because if you look here, you can see the 300 blackout hole down there, 308, 
impact there. And the 308 has basically disintegrated everything that it has come in contact with because it's going so much faster. You can see that because if you look at the inside of the film here, it is basically pureed the insides. Everything that it came in contact with was absolutely destroyed. So I hope that little range demo demonstrates the importance of velocity on terminal ballistic effects. Now, subsonic ammunition just does not have that going on. It's not meant to do that. It is not meant to be used in that capacity. And for lack of a better uh, way to put it, it is a range toy. It was devised for range demonstration purposes. If you're using it for anything else, you're a dick. If you're hunting with the stuff, you're going to maim that animal. It's going to suffer. Not cool, dude. Uh, if you're using it for defensive purposes, also not cool because you're less likely to impart sufficient uh, damage to that target to stop the threat. So you put yourself and those around you uh, in greater chance of uh, bodily harm or death because you decided to load it with stuff that is not effective for whatever reason. It's not something that you would use for that. And the other thing, uh, guys, it's expensive. I mean, it is much more expensive than standard ammunition because it is a niche loading specifically designed for those particular applications. And there you guys have it, subsonic versus supersonic ammunition. Two items doing a balancing act, trade-offs happening. One reduces sound, but really loses out on its terminal ballistic effects and its efficiency. The other one gets the job done, but it's a little bit louder. It's an application specific thing. You guys need to be the judge of which ammunition you're using. Remember, subsonic ammunition is going to be a little bit more expensive as well. But that is all for me on this topic. Thanks for watching here on the VSO Gun Channel. All this talk about things, including silencers, has me a little bit eh, irritated. So I am going to leave all the cans at home. I'm headed back to the range, and I'm going to make some noise. So thanks for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel, and I'll see you guys on a future video.